Greetings, loved ones. Let's take a chance. It's time for Amanda <laughs> Exclusivo. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Amanda Exclusivo. You guys, I'm so excited because this man was pretty much responsible for my whole childhood. Like, literally everything that you've done, I have watched as a kid. It's Peter Lenz. Hi, Peter. How you doing? Amanda, gee, I'm swell. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain. (laughs) For those of you that don't know who Peter is, if you can't tell by uh, his picture on the wall, he's the voice of this guy. Oh, that guy. (laughs) Do you recognize him, Peter? Uh, It looks vaguely like Walter. Yeah, I think that's Walter from uh, the Yeah. (laughs) Yes, this is Walter. (laughs) Uh, He's one of my favorites for the Muppets, and I was so excited when we connected. And I'm like, wow, I'm finally going to get the show off my Walter to Walter <laughs> himself. <laughs> He's the uh, best. He really. You know, if, you, if you squeeze him, he talks. Go, go, show, hold him up on camera and squeeze him. He'll talk. Hey, Amanda. Oh, you're squeezing me. That's it. That's all he does. <laughs> oh, my God. You had to be so excited finding out that you were going to be in the Muppets movie and playing probably one of my, my, my favorite, Walter. What was your reaction? Well, you know, great. Well, my gosh. Well, when I first got the phone call, I was thrilled because you know it was a long process. There was, you know, there were there were uh, there was the initial audition, and there was the callback, and then it was some time. Gosh, ten days, ten days, two weeks between the final audition and the callback, and there were only there were like five of us up for this role. And um, yeah, I was I was beyond I was beyond thrilled. But as far as you know, getting the character, I, w- I was thrilled that I was going to be in in another Muppet movie and get to do this character. But at the time. The movie wasn't really about Walter. He was a character in it for sure, but it wasn't really his story. And that that kind of evolved in the process of making the film. Right. No, because Walter's just a huge fan of the Muppets from when I watched the movie, I was like, wow, he's just as much of a nerd as I am when it comes to like my favorite <laughs> Disney movie. But for him, you know, it's Kermit the Frog, right? Like it's, yeah. it's awesome. It's incredible since that film came out, how many Walters, how many of us Walters are out there? There's a lot of us. <laughs> no, I, I was just so excited. I watched the movie a couple of days ago again because I just, I love the movie. I'm such a huge fan of oh, the Muppets. And the movie. fact that I'm talking to you is amazing. Gosh, and thanks. not only have you done the Muppets, but you've done so much more. Um, when I was little, I grew up on Bear in the Big Blue House. Oh, that nice. My favorite show. And guess who my favorite is? Was it the little mouse named Tutter? Yeah, it was. Oh my God. I love Tutter. So how did you, so how did you uh, originally get into doing Bear in the Big Blue House? What was the process Uh, like? It was, it was uh, the the same, similar to the Muppets. It was an audition. You know, I I was given a script, uh, you know, with sides, just a, a, you know, a few, a couple of scenes, um, a description of the character. And uh, I went in and uh, auditioned and read for the characters, performed a puppet on camera and got hired out of that. Um, and I, at that point, at that point, I'd been working on Sesame Street for quite a few years and I had done some little small projects with the Muppets. I think I'd already done Puzzle Place at that point, which was a show we did in the, in the mid nineties for PBS. Um, yeah, so it was just kind of a, it was just kind of an evolution. Yeah, I know. And the fact that you've done Sesame Street, that's another one of my shows that I grew up on as a kid. And of course- Me too. Right? <laughs> of course, we know you for playing Ernie. How is doing Ernie's laugh really hard to do? Because it's a unique one. It isn't a unique laugh. It, uh, it took a little while to learn because, you know, I, it's, <laughs> see if it can harken back. Because it sounds like it's, <laughs> no, wait, now I'm, now I'm doing it right. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's like, it's not as easy as it seems. <laughs> Because <laughs> you have to relax your tongue and hollow out your cheeks, and and I and I had to, I had to learn it by actually talking to people who knew Jim and worked with him, and how he made the laugh and how to make it sound right. Because uh, I, it's one thing to hear it over a speaker, over a television set, or a sound system, or your or your earphones, but it's it's another thing to hear it in person, um, which I never did because I never met Jim, but I work with and I'm you know my colleagues and friends who worked with him, and they they know you know what it sounded like. That's no, that's awesome. I love Bert and Ernie. I love all the scenes in the bathtub of them like singing along and stuff. It's just, it's the best. Me too. Me yeah. Too. <laughs> and I, I want to go back a little bit. I got too excited okay. once I had Walter oh, with okay. me. Um, 
did you originally start doing puppetry as a kid mm -hmm. or yeah how old yeah, were you yeah I mean, the, the, the family lore goes that I was three years old and my, my dad wow. put a puppet on my hand and showed me how to make it work. I, I have no memory of that. My, my earliest, I'm, I'm sure it happened. My earliest memory is in preschool, having a little squirrel puppet, a little squirrel, a mohair yeah. squirrel hand puppet and, and making the other kids laugh uh, and entertaining them with this, this little puppet and just loving that feeling uh, of being able to, well, not just making other people laugh, but also being able to say and do anything through this puppet because I was I was a little shy and this is kind of a common <laughs> puppeteer theme I think you know, there's, there's shyness but you can say anything with a, a puppet on your hand exactly. so it was really appealing plus I was you know it was exactly the right age to grow up with Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers and the Muppets so um, there was a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there for me to idolize and and look up to and want to grow up to be Oh, absolutely. And I know too, like you, you obviously went to college and mm -hmm. you studied psychology and then you went back to doing puppetry again. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Halfway through my junior year. It's like, I don't want to be a psychologist. Yeah. I don't, no. I don't want to play with dollies. So, you know, I, I ended up taking some early childhood education classes just to finish up the, the major and, and graduate. But yeah, I went straight, straight to a puppet theater after that. No, that's amazing. And do you have a puppet theater in your house? Do you No, you perform? know, when my kids, when my daughters were little, um, I, I built a puppet stage that would have been the puppet stage of my dreams Yeah. when I was that age. So it, it was a little, actually, I still have it. it. It's a little puppet theater, but it can double as a, like a little playhouse. And there's one side that has two doors that open up so you can have a pretend store. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, you know, the curtain, you pull the curtains and open up. So, so my late wife and I built that together. And oh, the girls, nice. I have twin girls, and they, they painted the back of it. And they must have been, gosh, I think it was before my son was born. So they're probably only like four years old. But their, their painting as a four-year-old still adorns the back side of the stage. Oh, that's so nice. Flowers and a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I remember you were saying, too, like you were a shy kid. I was also around about like maybe five or six mm -hmm. and my parents actually got me a puppet too and I oh. thought that I I was going to try to be a ventriloquist but now I'm a journalism major but I do have a friend for you that I want you to meet excellent she would love to say hello to you her name is Sunny okay um I'm gonna bring her hold on oh, this is exciting yeah she wants to say hello to you it you know she's never been on my channel before so she she only performs for like family events kind wow, of thing. I'm, yeah I'm honored. but she she wants to talk to you hi hello. peter hello sunny what a treat i just wanted to say hi and i'm a huge fan wow well thanks so i'm i'm a fan of yours now look at you <laughs> i think all your work is cool oh look at that that's pretty neat what a what a convenient shirt Thank you. Just, tie, just brought it into the conversation. Just by, that was great. Very clever. <laughs> but I just wanted to come on. But you know what? You know what? I think that you are cool. There it is. I'm cool. Do you hear that? <laughs> Thank you, Peter. I just wanted to say hi, but I'll give you back to the journalist now. Okay. Back to the journalism major. Say bye. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. She she really wanted to say hi to you. I couldn't I couldn't control it. You know, eight year olds these days. You oh, know. Oh yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. It's, Is that also her taco purse in the background hanging on the door? You know what's funny? No, um, that's not her taco. That's my taco. Um, I named it Tina, just so it kind of like goes together. You know. <laughs> it's, alliter it's alliterative. Sure, I it, get it. It makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. So I couldn't resist her dreams of, you know, like being on my channel. So I said, oh, okay, why that not? Was, that was her debut? That's the first time she's been that on? That was her first time. She's only done videos on my aunt's iPads and mm -hmm. has said hello to people. She was in my 21st birthday video, but she hasn't, she hasn't done anything since. So right. I wanted to give her a chance and I thought you were the perfect one. That would she's be- She's a star. Favorite. We're going to make her a star. We're going to make her a star. That's the plan. <laughs> So I wanted her to say hi. So yeah, I thought excellent. that would be a special treat for you because I'm sure I'm sure you do get a lot of fan fan requests. So Sunny was on the list. So I kind of wanted to <laughs> give her. I, you know what I do, but I don't always get a puppet show like that. So that was a treat. Thank oh, you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. No, yeah. When I was when I was little, I used to put on shows with Sunny all the time in my house, and it was just it was really fun, and it was a good way to bring family together. So. 
I, you know, it's fine. I did too. I mean, I, I would, that was some of my earliest stuff was doing puppet shows for my family. There's a, there's a family photo of us all uh, on the sofas, me and my mom and dad and my brother, one of my brothers and my sister. And I've got a puppet on my hand, Blue George, who was, was my puppet of choice when I was like about 13, 14 years old. Of all the puppets that you've played, which one do you find that you have more similarities with? It could be from Bear in the Big Blue House. Oh, Big well, Blue I Hell, mean. Walter, anyone. <sighs> Yeah, you know, they're, they're all exaggerations of personality, but I mean, for sure, Walter is the most relatable. I, I mean, that was the one of the things about I'm playing that back character. <laughs> that was one of the things about playing that character is that, is that uh, his story was was not unlike my own, you know, feeling, feeling out of place as a kid uh, and then finding solace and comfort in the Muppets. Um, that was really relatable. Uh, and then, uh, you know, singing and dancing with Jason Siegel. I did that all the time as a kid. And no, I didn't do that. Oh yeah, that's a, that's an everyday thing. Just that, that happens all dancing the time. with Jason Siegel. Uh, <laughs> you had to yeah, have- While he's dancing and I'm lying down on a, on a, on a trolley, on a cart with a bunch of equipment um, and <laughs> camera crew. All my other characters are, they're caricatures. You know, they're, um, they're exaggerated personalities. Walter's just a guy. He's just a guy, you know, Theo the lion on between the lines is a big lion. He's a big lion who likes to read books. Oh, you know? I love him. Tell him he's a little mouse. He's a little mouse. Uh, and uh, I'm Harry Monster. And Ernie's you know, kind of an iconic guy. I'm, you know, just kind of filling in for that fellow. So, uh, yeah, Walter's definitely the closest to me. That's interesting. I thought you were going to ask my favorite. So good, good on you. That was, uh, that was a different direction. Well done there. Because I mean, I'm sure I, I hate to ask who's your favorite because you've done so many voices that it's just, I'm sure it's so hard for you to pick just one. That's yeah. the best one that you've done. I mean, yeah. I've literally watched so many of the shows that you were, that you were on. And then like now without even realizing like, oh my God, that was Peter. And then like, like hearing that you were snuck the sloth and it's a big, big world. I was like, oh my God, I used to watch that show all the time. Yeah. I'm a big and whore. I said, I, I didn't turn down jobs. <laughs> okay i'll do it <laughs> what was it like being inside that costume it had to be kind of hot in there i'm hot sure and sweaty, right? hot and sweaty and heavy but fun you know yeah. what i had such a good time in that that character i don't get to do well i, I get to do body full body puppets a, a bit but that was the most concentrated time i'd ever spent in one and um because it wasn't in feathers like big bird is is feathers you, can, you can't just kind of roll around on the floor you have to be careful uh with all those feathers yeah. He was he was uh, he was fuzzy, and I could I could plop down and sit on things in him. We I used to do appearances. We went to MIPCON, which is this international children's television conference that happens in Cannes in France. Right. And uh, I would I could walk into like a conference room full of attendees, and I could just plop I'm like oh I'm tired, and just plop down on the floor and roll around. And it was <laughs> and there was the for those appearances they had a tiny little camera embedded in his forehead that you didn't really see. But um, I had a monitor on the inside so I could see it was like operating a big fuzzy camcorder. I could see where I was going oh, wow. by looking at this monitor. And I knew if I put a person's face like in the bottom left corner of the monitor, it would make the person would feel like the character was staring you know right right in their eyes. Right. And then you control everything. I'm assuming for Snook, it's all inside the costume. Oh yeah, sure, sure. It's just, and it's really simple. It, it was just, it was just his mouth. And then uh, there was a slide for my middle finger that controlled the, uh, the eyes. I think I pulled back and it make them close and they, they were spring loaded. So they would open up if I you know, relaxed it. It was the same, the same mechanism that was inside uh, Theo, uh, the lion from Between the Lions. They were all built by a master uh, puppet builder, uh, uh, puppet rig guy named Jim Krupa who um, his rigs are beautiful and elegant and just work really really well oh that's that's amazing too and and I'm sure like I'm, I'm assuming it's probably easier to work a puppet like Walter or Ernie right if I had to guess um I don't know about easier well I mean yeah it's less involved because there's less there's less stuff <laughs> but you bring up a point that it's my favorite type of, of, of character to do is the, the simpler the better not because it's more difficult mm -hmm. but um, I love the amount of expression you can get out of a real simple sock puppet like Tutter the Mouse Tutter is just this little blue basically just a little tiny sock puppet with eyes no eye mechanism no not that he had a tail he had a tail and I had a little rod that I could twist to make his tail waggle oh um, I didn't know that yeah I mean it wasn't mechanical it was just a wire inside of wrapped inside a cloth but um i uh i love how much expression you can get out of the simplest puppet 
you know, Miss Piggy is the same way. People think I don't, I don't play Miss Piggy, but people think, oh, and Miss Piggy bats her eyelashes at Kermit. Well, she doesn't bat her eyelashes. She, she doesn't have a mechanism in there that does anything like that. But that's just the skill of the of the puppeteer making you believe that that's that's what's happening. Well, since I didn't ask you what your favorite puppet's play was, what what was the most challenging one for you? Hmm. Hmm. Well. Honestly, initially Walter was, and it yeah. wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with the way the puppet was built physically or anything like, like that. It was because of the character and what, when I auditioned and I got the role, I wasn't doing, I didn't do the voice that's ended up in the film. The voice I, that we did when we actually started filming was my own voice. And I found that incredibly challenging. People, you, you think, wow, that'd be so easy. You just put the puppet on and just talk. How easy is that? But I, I found it really difficult because my entire life I had been performing characters and doing character voices and hiding behind the character and being anything other than myself. So it was a real barrier to, to I had to work at it and, and break through that. And then now it's not, I can, it's not such a thing anymore, but that was a huge challenge just to get over that hurdle of just putting on a puppet. Okay. Cause to my own ear, my own voice, but that's not a character voice. That's just how I talk. No, I can, I can, I can hear it because I wasn't yeah. sure if you had a particular voice for him because we've never talked before. Right. And it's, and it's literally you. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's weird, right? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I'm a little more complex individual than Walter, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love Walter's personality and he's, he's just so much fun. And I wish we could see him more often in the Disney parks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that would yeah. that'd be fun. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> but before you go, Peter, I was wondering if we could play a quick game. Oh. Um, I'm kind of known for it for my channel. Okay. Um, it's called the speed round. So uh -huh. what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you as many questions as I can within a minute. There, oh boy, that there, means I need to do like short answers, right? Yeah. They're, okay. they're about you. So don't worry. It's it's very easy. I'll I'll give you my record. My record right now is um, James Roday. He's from Psych and a Million Little Things. He's gotten a record of seventeen. Oh my gosh! Oh, I don't know. He did a good That's, job. He did a great job in He's a minute. Five. In one minute. Yeah, in in one minute. Wow, I'm impressed. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Job. Okay. I can do this. Okay. Wait. Wait. Okay. All right. Oh. All right. Okay. Get ready right. here. Okay. All right. <laughs> I like the prep beforehand. Okay. 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 All right. And all right. Okay. You sure? Are you ready for me to hit start? No. Wait. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. All right. And the timer starts now. New York or California? New York. Your favorite TV show as a child? Uh, the, the Muppet Show. How old is Walter? 26. Your favorite car? Tesla Model S. Your favorite go-to snack? Uh, the apple with peanut butter. Okay, palm trees or snowmen? Palm trees. Are you an early riser or a night owl? Early riser. Ocean or the pool? Ocean. Home cooked meal or dining out? <sighs> oh, that's, oh, <laughs> depends. Home cooked. Okay, all right. Disney World or Disneyland? Land. Okay. Bazooka or Hubba Bubba? Hubba Bubba. Okay. Crayons or markers? Crayons. What'd you eat for lunch? What I eat for lunch? Yeah. I had a leftover Moroccan beef stew over couscous. Oh, the time's up. How'd I do? You got 13. How did that dude get 17? He was answering before you had, okay, all right. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't choke. He didn't choke on, on dining in or, or, or eating out, on home cooked or eating out. Well, That's but you did, you did a great job. And the little tiny mouse was just the little baby Amanda. Thank you, Amanda, for having me on your show. Golly jeepers. <laughs> now it can be dickery. Oh my God. I'm so glad that little Amanda is still wild about reading. <laughs> That's true. I have been reading a lot of books. Maybe that. sometimes she'd come to Gawain's word. Gawain's word. But only if she knows about Between the Lions. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, that's I... probably enough of that. <laughs> I love it. I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me, Peter. It's a well, pleasure.
Robert Ducky, you're the one. You make bath time lots of fun. Robert Ducky, I'm awfully fond of you. <laughs> vo 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 dio. <laughs> <laughs>